Reinforcements have arrived. When I played through Tiberian Sun at the end of last year, as an extra bit of interest to the people watching, I thought I'd re-enable a piece of cut content, the dropship menu, and therefore give myself full control of what forces were going to be deployed at the start of Mission 1. New construction options. Reinforcements have arrived. Now when I did that, I was under the impression that most people were aware of the existence of the dropship menu, but were perhaps unaware that you could re-enable it yourself. However, I was surprised by a number of comments from people who said they'd never heard of the feature, let alone that they could use it themselves in-game. If you look towards the top of the screen, you may have noticed that the two dropships that come down at the start of the opening level of the GDI campaign have deposited four Wolverines, twice the normal amount. Now, I didn't edit this in the game files as such, but rather it shows those forces from an in-game menu, the dropship menu. Now, the screen is fully configurable by yourself, and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is to get your hands on a mix editor. Mix files are essentially zipped folders used by Tiberian Sun that contain a whole load of different files. Now the program I use is called XCC Mixer, but that's an ancient piece of technology. I used it way back in the day, decades ago. There may well be a more recent up-to-date one uh, that you can get your hands on, but if you search around online it won't be too long before you come across one. And uh, once you've done that you want to open up the mix file, specifically the maps folder or the maps mix, and find the campaign map that you want to edit. So your first restriction is it has to be a map that contains dropship reinforcements by default. Uh, you're going to be relying on those waypoints and the dropships that are programmed into the level in order for this to work. So I'm just using this first level as example GDI 1A and uh, what you're going to need to do is find the basics folder just here and I've also got open on the right hand side rules.ini so this is the kind of uh, meat and potatoes of editing the Tiberian Sun game. Uh, it contains absolutely tons and tons of data which we're going to be referring to during our editing here. So finding the basics column here for basics area I want to add a couple of lines here so first of all I want starting dropships and then it's going to be equal to a number it can be one two or three or you can just miss out the line completely. Uh, the reason you can't go above three is because the dropship menu itself is not configured there's no uh, artwork for any greater number of dropships than three. However what you'll find is that uh, you are still reliant on those pre-programmed dropship waypoints. So even if you have a higher number of dropships uh, set in this screen here, if there aren't enough waypoints that are designated, you aren't going to get those additional dropships. So what I'm going to do is leave it at three here just as a demonstration. Next thing you're going to want to add is allowable units. And this here, we're going to populate with the list of different units taken from the rules in it. So you see in the brackets here, four tank for the mammoth tank, cover here for the Homer MLRS. And you can go through this and add whatever you particularly want. However, again, there are some restrictions. So we're playing as GDI, obviously, if we're going to use the Orca dropships. And that's dictated in this line just here. You can alter it, but obviously we want to continue playing as GDI for our GDI campaign lap. Now that's relevant because the allowable units line here is only going to accept forces that have GDI set as their owner in this column here or in this file here. So for example the Hover MLRS is a GDI specific unit. It says owner GDI. You can find other examples. I'll see if I can. Deployable sensor array. You've got owner GDI and NOD. If you want to make it buildable and nod unit or deployable in the dropship menu, you can add GDI to the owner here, but that's going to have other consequences in the game. Uh, be aware, if you have something like non-specific, like factory radar here, uh, anytime you build one of these structures yourselves or the GDI or nod equivalent, you're going to have access to that unit whether you want to or not outside of the dropship menu. So what I'm going to do is uh, write in allowable units, a number of different ones. So E1, that's your basic infantry. I'll do E2 as well, that's disc throwers. And then we're going to add wolverines here and uh, some titans. What else can I add? Let's add engineer, why not? Okay, so there you go. That's a, a handful of different units that you can have. The last kind of line we're going to add is allowable units maximums, like so. Not units, just unit maximum. And uh, then you can dictate the maximum number of units you want to deploy. Now, this line does actually work. I'm going to demonstrate it, but there's a good reason why you should not use it. And I will do that too. So what I'm going to do is have everything set to negative one. That is an infinite number, essentially. And uh, have only 
E2 here, the disc thrower is set to 2, just as a sake of demonstration. Uh, what I'm going to do now is save this file because we are done editing it. There are a couple of other lines uh, that are relating to the dropship menu, but uh, you shouldn't use them because they're not reliable or they can cause bugs. So really you only want these first two and I'll explain why or demonstrate why the, this allowable unit maximums should be ignored. Right, let's go back into the game. So here we have our dropship menu, and as you can see, it's not sized correctly to the rest of the screen. It is a fixed size, which is going to be relevant in a second. On the right-hand side column, you can see the different units that we made available to ourselves. And on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see three different uh, boxes, uh, each with five smaller boxes within. That is going to be how we are populating our dropships. At the bottom right, if I didn't mention already, is our available credits. That's going to be dictated in that mission file as well. Now, one big issue you've got straight away is there's no cursor. So the mouse starts in the middle of the screen so you can use it without so. But if you want to do this, the easiest way to do it is to start the mission. And you do so just by pressing space. And then... Establishing battlefield control. Stand by. Thanks, Eva. If we restart now, the mouse has been loaded by the game and I have an easier time of populating our dropship. That is a problem with this using a, or using this unfinished feature is the game doesn't think to draw the mouse on screen until you've actually started the map. So what we're going to do is populate our dropship. So I'm going to have a couple of Wolverines, three infantry there, and then in the second one I'm going to have two Titans, which is not a unit you typically have in this map, another three infantry, and last but not least I'm going to have two uh, disc throwers in this last dropship and then I'll put in another three of those. You'll see because I put a limit on the number of disc throwers this unit now becomes greyed out. I can't add any more even if I wanted to. Now again more limitations of this cut feature. It's difficult to um, control. Uh, you can't drag and drop. That's what I'm trying to say. So you can remove units like so just by uh, clicking on them on the left hand side here and uh, you get a chance to populate them differently. Uh, again though, you need to work your way through a full dropship before you move on to the second one. So that is a limitation. It's why you should probably always have light infantry equipped. So if you've got different dropships coming in at different points in the mission later on, uh, you can have the essential units at the start here and then just uh, a number of light infantry just to kind of bulk it out just to be able to get to the later stage. Uh, as I mentioned, the mouse can go way off the screen here, so when you don't have it enabled after loading the mission, it's easy to lose uh, track of it, especially if you don't immediately kind of move to the top right here and start selecting straight away. It is possible to do it without the mouse cursor. Anyway, what I'm going to do here is fill the last uh, dropship here with light infantry as a demonstration, because as I mentioned before, there's only going to be two dropships programmed into this level that are going to arrive. And what we, or what you would expect to see, is two Wolverines, three infantry, two Titans, another infantry, and two disc throwers. You won't expect to see this third dropship. So let's see what actually comes along. New construction options. Reinforcements have arrived. And here come our dropships. So again, only two have arrived because that's all the program or uh, that's all the waypoints that exist in the level for dropships. And here come our units. But you'll notice there's a couple missing. So we have our two Wolverines and infantry as we expected from the first one. And from the second one, we've got two Titans and one infantry. But where are our disc throwers? Well, they're missing because anytime a unit becomes grayed out in the right hand side of the dropship menu, they're automatically disabled from actually spawning in the level, which is obviously a major problem with using that feature. In essence, then, you're only limited by the number of credits in the bottom right of the screen and trying to use the allowable unit maximums is pointless because if you ever hit that maximum, just that unit is gonna be completely removed from the dropship uh, deployment. Anyway guys, I hope you found this interesting look at a piece of cut content from Tiberian Sun, which is still to some limited capacity in the game. You can enable it. Whether you should or not is a completely different question entirely. Obviously you're the one doing all the coding and therefore all the balancing as well. You could, for example, make an unlimited number of Mammoth Tank Mark IIs available to the player, which would completely break any level in the game. But in a custom map, for example, you may want to give them this option, but there's no restrictions on how many of any one unit you can have. Because like I said, if you hit that restriction, well, that unit's just not going to spawn at all. They could populate that first dropship 
with those Ubu units, thereby running themselves out of cash and removing those later spawns of dropships from the map entirely. That may or may not be something you uh, need to consider when you're designing maps if you want to include this feature. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. I have a number of Command & Conquer videos coming out over the next few days, and I have a couple other pieces of cut content I want to feature, uh, primarily for Tiberian Sun, but maybe a, a video on an earlier Command & Conquer game as well. Thanks for watching. If you found the video interesting, please leave me a comment. I really appreciate leaving them, and uh, send the video around to anyone else you think you might be interested. Thanks for watching.